Good morning, YouTube. Today, I want to review a 2015 Maserati Gran Turismo MC. So, are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. This is my garage, and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience, buying and selling them, driving them, reviewing them, and even working on them ourselves. And today, I borrowed this beautiful 2015 Maserati MC from my buddy Richard. I need to do my hands. <laughs> and we're gonna take it out for a spin and talk all about it. The Maserati Gran Turismo was first produced in 2007. So this thing's been being produced for quite a while. And it's effectively had the same look the entire time. Maybe a few little stylistic changes, but not a whole lot. It is a front mid engine. So the engine is behind the front axle, which does mean it does have pretty good weight distribution. 47% front, 53% rear. It came as a two plus two coupe or a convertible. Originally this car had the 4.2 liter cross-plane F136 blocked engine. So this was producing about 400 horsepower and they mated it to a six-speed ZF automatic transmission. That is the same engine block that's in the Ferrari F430 and the Ferrari 458. However, it's a cross-plane crank configuration. They later bored it over or stroked it or something and got it up to 4.7 liters and bumped the horsepower up to 434 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, 360 foot-pounds of torque at 4,750 RPM. It is a wet sump engine, so they don't use the same dry sump systems that means it is mounted a little bit higher in the car they can't get it quite as low as center of gravity later models also had the mc shift automated manual transmission basically it's the same transmission that was in the f430 this is technically the gran turismo maserati mc sport line which now everyone just calls the mc it came out in 2009 and then i think they modified it again in 2012 basically this means it has a bunch of carbon fiber bits like this carbon fiber spoiler it's got carbon fiber fiber door handles, carbon fiber side view mirrors. It has a carbon interior package, which includes a carbon fiber steering wheel, carbon fiber flappy paddles, carbon fiber bits all over the dashboard. They did add a little bit more horsepower. It's up to 444 or 454. I'm not sure which. It was a bit confusing trying to figure out which this version has. It also was up to 376 or 384 foot pounds. I'm not sure which again. And the red line was bumped up to 7,500 RPMs. This car can go zero to 60 in four 4.7 or 4.5 seconds depending on whose source you're going for car and driver claim 4.5 although maserati actually said 4.7 the quarter mile time is a 13.2 at 112 miles per hour considering this car weighs over 4,000 pounds it's closer to 4,300 pounds that's pretty impressive top speed is 185 miles an hour i'll tell you that getting information about this car is actually kind of tricky because it's been in production for so long they've had all these different variants and different transmission and engine combinations and they changed the horsepower and yada yada yada. I met this lawyer, we went out to dinner, I had the lobster bisque, we went back to my place, yada yada yada, I never heard from him again. So you yada yada over the best part. No, I mentioned the bisque. Basically, I was like, I'm not sure exactly what this thing is doing, so feel free to correct me if you know the details of it. I'm not 100% sure, but basically we're in the somewhere near 450 horsepower range. It's running a 4.7 liter V8, that's the F136 block. I am actually a very big fan of the look of this car. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I know that some people say that the front end of it looks like a fish or something like that. I don't know, whatever. The overall styling of it is just a very sleek, beautiful, and classy design. It just has good lines you can clearly see that the hood is made of carbon fiber once you lift it up. Hiding underneath it is this beautiful Maserati 4.7 liter. Same, again, same block as in my car. It doesn't quite have the same intake configuration. It obviously has different heads and cam profiles, and obviously we have the cross-plane crank. Now here's where the Maserati really starts to shine. As soon as you open the door, you see this beautiful interior, and the leather is just absolutely fantastic material it is super plush beautiful styling cool little accents like this carbon fiber right here carbon fiber fiber kick plates once you sit down to the seats you'll see they're very very comfortable however you're immediately noticing this ancient thing that you're like what the hell is this i can't believe this is a 2015 and it's still got like buttons to dial your phone so that's one downside is maserati basically didn't change out this stereo infotainment infotainment center for forever i guess supposedly the 2020 has a different one it's got like a touch screen and stuff but it still even now looks a little bit dated if you can ignore that and just look at the rest of the car you're like okay this is a beautiful interior you see they've got the actual physical gauge 
gauges with the physical tachometer and physical speedometer. Pretty ancient display in the center that shows some information about the car. It's it's kind of jankety. We have actual cup holders that seem like they can hold a some sort of reasonable cup in here. You got door pockets, you've got even a glove box that's reasonably sized that can fit some stuff. We've even got a little bit of storage space right here in the center console. As you can tell, this is kind of like the more practical version. I mean, this is a grand touring car. It's right in the name of it, the Gran Turismo. So it's designed for comfort, relaxation, and to be able to do a long drive. All right, we do have rear seats, so I'm gonna try and see if I can actually fit into the rear seats. Oh, good. The seat does move forward for me automatically. Uh, pray for me. All right, so I'm in the rear seat, and I actually have a little bit of headroom. I'm only five foot nine, so I'm not super tall, but I can actually fit reasonably comfortable. And I'm gonna try putting the seat back, which means it's gonna retract and we'll see if I still fit. Okay, seat, don't kill me, please. Okay, all right, it's getting closer. Uh, oh, dude, okay. So my knees are basically pressed up into the back of the seat, but I'm able to sit fully upright and there's a reasonable amount of space. So uh, you can actually fit adults in the rear of this thing. It's still a two plus two. It's obviously not the most spacious configuration. I'm comfortable. I could survive this for, you know, like an hour. We've even got cup holders back here and a little center armrest thingy. Yeah, a little armrest. Yeah. Oh, hey, look, we even have vents back here. Wow. So one thing that took me a little bit to figure out last night is the controls for the seat because they're kind of positioned far apart. A little bit of difficulty just trying to get them all set up, but once I figured it out, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it's all pretty straightforward stuff. As you can see, the trunk space is actually not as much as you would think considering how big the car is. I mean, it's still reasonable. You're still gonna be able to fit some stuff back here, but you're not gonna be fitting a bunch of massive suitcases. Can we fit two bodies? Yeah, I think we could fit two dead bodies. I don't know about three. Two for sure, maybe three if they're smaller people. This is a big car. You can see it takes up the entire garage front to back. In fact, I have to make sure I'm pulling forward just enough in order to get it so that the tail of the car doesn't get hit by the garage door. And now you can see there is not really enough room for a person to squeeze by. Maybe maybe Megan could squeeze by. I'm gonna have a hard time. It actually has really good visibility. So the forward visibility is pretty good. It does have a pretty long hood, but it's not ridiculously long like some of the other front engine cars. And it's slopes down immediately so when you're sitting there you actually can't really see the hood at all it just kind of looks like you're just floating in the ethers side visibility is excellent given the size of this thing i suspect parking it's kind of going to be a pain in the ass all right let's get this maserati out on the road for the best thing about this car the sound oh it's got a beautiful and aggressive exhaust note you're gonna love this all right we're in the mc got the old school key up in sport <laughs> yeah you need it to be in sport for it to sound good so immediately you sit down and you're just like oh man this is very comfortable the, the seating position is very relaxed the seats are just comfortable. So right away you can tell that this is set up to be a grand touring car. This is not a true sports car. The steering is very, very light and the ride quality is very comfortable. It is not as tight as you would think. Although when you corner, it's not too much body roll, but the response is very slow. So that's fascinating though is the pedals are super, super close together. Like your foot is right on both pedals. If it was a manual transmission, you could heel toe with no problem whatsoever. So when we did the bull run last year, this is the car that Richard took because his 458 was currently disabled. Okay, Richard, what'd you do? Dan, I don't know what I did. <laughs> Apparently, Ferraris don't like to be probed. Not that kind of probe. Not that, uh, probably not any kind of probing. Good job, Richard. And he actually said how he, he was totally relaxed and comfortable. He's just sitting there enjoying the drive. Didn't have any driver's fatigue like we did. So I will say this, you can tell, is a grand touring car. It just feels really comfortable. Everything about it is just designed to be a relaxed but fun drive and still has a lot of power. I've got some weird buttons up here. I'm not sure what those do. Oh, we got a little garage door buttons up here. Sport mode makes it so that the valves open. You want the valves open on this car. You want to hear that flat plane crank. You want to hear that beautiful V8 sound. It has almost a muscle car sound to it. It sounds very much like this is a very throaty, almost American Italian hybrid car. It just is interesting the way it sounds. It's really cool. You 
son of a bitch. Not on the gas all the way, just still warming up the car. The shifts are just a little slow, they're not super fast, but they're very smooth. Oh, but that sound. <laughs> that sound is epic. So we've got a six-speed transmission. Now we're at like 2,000 RPM. So it's going to burn some gas. I mean, it's still designed to get some good acceleration. They're not so concerned with mileage in this car. The difference between second gear and third gear is quite significant. There, It's like the gearing ratio is really far spaced. Because when I was downshifting there, it really had a jump to get the second gear from third gear versus when you went from four to three, it was like hardly any blip on the throttle at all. It's about three quarters throttle. It's definitely got some torque. It's not, it's not a slouch, that's for sure. really cool is I'm driving on some pretty rough sections of road and it is handling these bumps like you barely even feel them and it feels like I can toss around the corners even though it's really heavy car it just I guess you know what it is, is there's not that much body roll all right here we go let's have some fun So everything's just a little bit softer and easier to deal with. But it doesn't totally lose that ability to, to drive nicely. And that's really, if you're buying this car, you're going to buy this car because you want a fun car that you can truly daily drive and just be pleasant. And that's what this is. This is a very, very pleasant car to drive. There we go. really smooth, it absorbs all the bumps really nicely, yet I can still take these corners really <laughs> pretty fast. You don't feel the body roll at all. This is a very, very good balance between sportiness and comfort. I, I'm really pleased with how this thing handles, considering how smooth it is. I mean, it really is a very smooth car. This is, this is great. Bottom out, although we do ride a little bit higher in this car. Oh, listen to that sound. It totally sounds like a muscle car. It's crazy. I can't believe this is an Italian car. It's hilarious. Just so deep and throaty. So if you're looking for a total sports car, balls to wall sort of thing, you're gonna be very disappointed with this car. But if you're looking for a more comfortable, daily drivable Grand Tour. This is perfect. I mean, I am, my seat is so comfortable. The interior is so nice. It even, it even smells really good in here. Richard, what are you, what are you putting in your car? <laughs> and you got that sound, that, that awesome exhaust note just sounds epic. It's egging you on to stab the gas a little bit harder each time you accelerate. It's just a beautiful car. It really is from the outside. Beautiful, the interior is beautiful. Ignore the infotainment, just ignore it. It's terrible. The Italians really just haven't figured out infotainment very well. They need to just hire some of the Ford Sync engineers and be like, hey, build us an infotainment center. The braking solid, the acceleration's great. You can bomb around these corners and feel confident that it's planted 
It's not going to get squirrely on you. Look at that. Smooth as can be around these corners. Flying. Bumps. Nothing. Don't even feel them. Damn. This is really, really sweet. A perfect balance. Alright, here we go. Sorry, Richard. Hit your rev limiter. We've now assessed that we can play pretty good in the car, so let's see how it handles as a daily driver. So I'm gonna shift it up six gear. I can't even hardly hear it. Hell, I'm gonna take out a sport mode real quick. quiet as any luxury car I've ever been in. They barely can hear the engine, almost no wind noise. We'll see what it's like on the highway in just a minute, but it's just smooth, pleasant. I could see having a business call on this, you know, like talking to someone, figuring out, bye bye bye, sell, sell, sell. This is perfect for a business person who wants a good looking car yet can still play. Maybe you don't want to have two cars, you just want one this would be pretty reasonable for it. When these are new, they're very expensive, like 160 plus thousand dollars, even like $180,000 when they're highly optioned. But on the used market, I was looking around, depending on the year, you can get them as cheap as like $45,000, $50,000. Now granted, those are like the early, early years with a lot of miles. Most of them seem to be around like the seventy-five dollars to $90,000 mark. So it's still not a cheap car, but on the used market, you're getting a lot of car for the money and of course everyone's gonna say oh but it's a it's an Italian car it's a Maserati it's gonna break it's a piece of shit I was talking to Richard when I picked it up and he said he's had this thing for probably close to a year now the only thing that went wrong was he had some weird squeak from the steering wheel and like when you turn the wheel it'd squeak but nothing's broken nothing catastrophic no mechanical failures that's encouraging I think maybe you know the whole old Italian cars need work thing might not be quite as true anymore. I think they're getting more reliable, they're more solid cars. All right, I'm gonna switch it to drive. We're gonna drive it just like a, a normal daily driving mode would be. I'm gonna get on the highway, we'll see how pleasant it is. Although I may have to stab the gas just to get on the highway. I mean, you know, for science. We've got controls on the steering wheel front and rear to control your infotainment, so at least we have that kind of minor, modern convenience. We're gonna drive it like a civilized human being and stab the gas. decent power you can really get up and go when you need to the downshift there was pretty quick it didn't it didn't hesitate much so again we're in regular mode like no sport mode drive get on the highway I mean, there's almost no wind noise all right I've had enough of the boring daily driving stuff it clearly can do it very well because I'm I'm just kind of sitting here at a loss for words because I'm just like oh, I'm comfortable I have no wants I'm just driving sport <laughs> there we go. Immediately put it in sport and downshifted and opened up the valves. I was like, oh, you want to play now, huh? I see how it is. It's as good as any luxury car that you can think of on the market. I think maybe the the technology and the infotainment center is lacking compared to some of the stuff like BMW and Mercedes has. But the driving characteristics are excellent. Uh, even with the windows up, that exhaust note, oh. It's so good. Honestly, if I was buying a daily driver that I wanted to be very nice, still have some sportiness about it, still could play, this is a pretty good option. Now, if I'm going for a straight up sports car, you're gonna be disappointed. You really are. This is not a sports car, so don't confuse it with a sports car, except that it's a grand touring car and that's what's meant to be. And they did it really well. It is accomplishing the mission of this car very well. Are you going to be doing like hardcore track stuff on this and beat some record times? No. Are you going to win at the drag strip? No. Yeah, it, it's definitely lacking in some of that performance specs, but it is still quick, still pretty nimble. It rides very pleasantly. It's just the ride quality is 
really, it's up in the top that I've ever driven. It is a very smooth, very nice car. And it's very balanced. I love how well balanced it is. The thing is, I'm just not getting as excited as I am when I drive stuff like the Ferraris or Lamborghinis because to me, those those embody excitement. Like the, those are passionate, like crazy cars that you don't drive every day. And every time you drive it, it's an experience. And that's not what this is. This is not an experience. This is meant to be practical, comfortable, and totally usable for daily driving purposes. Are you gonna be excited about driving this car every day? Yeah, more so than you're gonna be driving my Subaru, more than you're gonna be driving just about every other daily drivable car. And that's where it's kind of cool, because I think if you want a daily driver that's still gonna get your heart going a bit, this is that car. So you can see, this is really an excellent Grand Touring car. It's right in the name of it. It does exactly what it's named to do. Should not be a surprise there, and it's doing it very well. Certainly on the used market, this is an excellent car for the price. I don't think I would be buying these new. I'm not sure if it's worth $160,000, $170,000. That starts to stretch it and really push what I think is reasonable for that much money. But then again, I am not really a typical shopper for this car. I'm not really looking for a Grand Tour. I kind of enjoy my Ferrari, and I'd rather have have two cars one that's kind of a daily driver beater thing like my Subaru and then have the Ferrari for full-on balls to the wall stuff and this just isn't going to accomplish the balls to the wall driving that you might want it's not going to say that it's not going to be fun you're not going to have a good time in it but again it's just a bit more of a soft comfortable drive hey again that's what it's meant to do that's why you buy this car. Don't buy this car thinking you're buying a sports car. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Those things do help out my channel tremendously. So thank you very much. Also, I have a giveaway going on. One of you is going to win this slip blow scrape guard kit. All you have to do to be eligible to win is either sign up for my email list at normalguysupercar.com, buy any of my merch at normalguysupercar.com, or become a member of my channel. If you do any of those three things, you are automatically entered to win. So as soon as I hit 55,000, one of you is going to get that slip up scrape card. We're going to be doing a lot of car stuff. You're going to want to stay tuned. It's going to be sweet.